Welcome back, viewers, to another stream of Art Lounge. This is going to be part 17. I'm your host. I will be doing a quick review before I'm going to jump into the new uh, lesson. Or rather, a continuation of uh, where I was yesterday. So, what you're looking at over here is some of the common mistakes that people make when they are learning to draw. Uh, the first one being, and this is one that I also uh, made when I was learning to draw, was not drawing three-dimensionally, not understanding parts of the figure three-dimensionally, and just doing the outlines of them. And this is just another example. You know, you're drawing it flat rather than understanding it three-dimensionally. Um... Then, another part is when you are drawing uh, the parts of the body three-dimensionally, you want to make sure that you're not drawing them um, without any shape. For example, it is good to draw the cylinder and to get better at understanding how to draw it properly. But uh, when it comes to drawing the... Um, drawing the cylinder shape as a, uh, a body feature or a body... Wow, can't really speak today. I'm kind of stuttering over my words here. Um, a body part, you want to make sure that you give it curves. Uh, you want to make sure that it does resemble actual uh, parts of the body itself. And I like to think of it as, when it comes to this shape right here, as like a bowling pin, right? It starts out pretty pretty wide at the base and then it just tapers off towards the top. So this is like an upside down bowling pin in a sense. So think of it as that way. And you could see how that shape really does play into all the different parts of the body from the wrist to the upper part of the leg to the bottom part of the leg, even the torso itself, as you could see, is in a sense, um, that sort of shape. And, mm, yeah, I would say that pretty much. And in, in a way, if you look at it, including the head, it is like the uh, bowling, bo um, bowling pin shape as well. But either, um, either look at it that way or just even see it that um, all other parts are cylinder shape with it being wide and then tapering towards the bottom, being wide at the top, tapering over towards the bottom. Same thing over here, same thing for the arms. So that's another common mistake. Try not to draw them flat. Remember this idea that starts out wide and tapers off towards the bottom. This is just another example over here of tracing the exterior of the body as opposed to drawing it three-dimensionally understanding the shape and how each part fits into uh, each other. And the most common mistake that happens when people tend to draw from the exterior part, part of the body is, for example, you might end up drawing one side a little bit too high while the other side too low. You know, you all, all you're doing is you're referencing a line, right? And you're just hoping that by eyeing it, you will be, your hand will be able to mimic that exact line on paper. And mistakes are made in between that time. You might end up drawing this side short, the other one long. And that's just going to throw off the entire drawing. Especially if you don't keep in mind that you have to sketch lightly or you have to draw lightly in the beginning. Then you're going to have like this really ingrained, disproportionate um, body feature that you're going to have to wrestle with later or right after you do it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's an, another common mistake that people make. Um, the other one right here is just an example to show how if you don't take into account the head as the unit of measurement, and you just draw things without any uh, consideration to how they relate to the rest of the body, you're going to draw things disproportionately. Like you're going to draw, let's say, the arm too wide, um, as opposed to what the rest of the body looks like. The wrist is going to be too wide as well and that just doesn't look right you want to first nail down the ideal proportions 
before you exaggerate, before you, uh, you know, get more and more creative with things. Um, here is an example of foreshortening, how it starts out with just like a flat view of the cup shape, and then as it starts tilting more towards you, or let's just say the camera is rising further up above the cup, you see less of the base and more of the surface of it. And this is just another example of it being even higher, almost over the top of the cup, or, or glass rather. So you could, and you could see how that kind of helps as well if you want to, hold on a second. Gonna take a break from those sprite soundtracks. Um, and you could see how that also helps with the hand. You're gonna try to draw the hand attached to it at the base. Kinda helps you shape or understand it better that way as well. It's three-dimensionally, thinking three-dimensionally, how things fit into each other. Um, here we got an example of, let's say you start out by drawing the arm in this perspective, right? And you're drawing the front of the arm, or rather, um, the wrist area exactly in its length which doesn't make much sense in this perspective because it does attach to the elbow whereas in this shape you know and where the shoulder is it just seems like it's completely detached from it it, it looks like this basically and it, it not only that but it looks extremely long because it's not taking into account that it isn't straightforward it's kind of curving towards the elbow. So because it is curving towards the elbow, it's just going to be shorter for the camera or the viewer's eye. Um, even though this might look right, the wrist might look right, it doesn't make sense when you take into account the shoulder. So studying the relationship between... This is another example of studying the relationship between objects. You know, it's not good just to... Uh, draw the exterior, really think about how it really connects with one another. So if you were to draw it like this, it would basically be this. You would have like an incredibly long forearm and it would be disproportionate to the rest of the arm. Um, this is an example of how it actually turns and what it would look like. As you can see, it goes further back the more it turns towards the viewer. Um, this is just an, another example of this, basically. A long, just an example of how long it actually looks, and it just doesn't look right. Whereas this demonstrates the more accurate depiction of, like, foreshortening. Uh, moving on to this part, just another example of how, if you don't think about, um, or take into account, or pay attention to the shape of the head, how that's going to distort the rest of the body if you follow the head as the unit of measurement. So as we know, three heads across is for the width of the body. Um, and if you measure this, I like to use this ruler. It's a clear one. It's very useful. You could see how it really does create this very broad kind of look of the body. And then if you take into account that the hip area is one and a half heads, right? You measure this. And you're like, okay, it's one head and then half a head. Then you have to connect the torso to the hip area and you're going to get this like really wide kind of uh, chest area. So you want to avoid doing that as well. And all of it just plays into how, uh, how important it is to have the right head shape. This right here just demonstrates more of an ideal form, something that uh, is closer towards a proportionate body. And this right here, excuse me, uh, this right here is when you draw the head, um, again, it's, it's the opposite of this, where it's like incredibly narrow. So the top part of the head isn't even a circle, it's like this oblong shape, and then you add the cup to it uh, for the chin area. Um, that just results in the same thing as this, except the complete opposite in, in terms of width. You know, it becomes incredibly narrow 
because you drew the head incredibly narrow and then you used it to measure the rest of the body. So the results are the same. Um, it is important to, when you're learning the proportions, when you're learning the anatomy, to also include this line down the middle because it simplifies things for you. It makes you compare both sides and say, okay, is this proportionate? You know, you want to avoid something like this where you draw the line down the middle and then you start to see like, whoa, this right side of the head is a, is kind of warped. The shape is different. Um, this side is a little bit more narrow in comparison to this side. And then you could just make adjustments because again, if you're drawing a straight shot like this, if you're trying to understand the figure, this, uh, it would really help you make sure everything is proportionate in relation to each other. Uh, and then this is just another example of if you don't take it into account the relationship between the two, you're going to have everything else kind of look distorted as well. You know, if you're going to use the head as the unit of measurement for the, um, for the right side, let's say, and you're like, okay, it's half a head for the arm, right? So you measure the widest point of, of the head and then you compare it. Let's just do that. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense because the arm's width is half the head. Now you do it for the opposite side and it's a totally different result. So remember to, when you're studying all this, to draw the line down the middle, to just simplify things for you and make it easier for your eye to catch these mistakes and be like, oh, look, it just, it doesn't look right on one side as opposed to the other one. This is an example of a proportion of body, how things are in relation to everything with a line down the middle, making sure that everything is uh, proportioned to each other. This right here is the same, except the head shape isn't even taken into account. Like somebody who studies the body parts and the anatomy of the figure well, but then just doesn't take into account the shape of the head. And that looks weird, right? Um, again, you want to make sure you learn the ideals, you learn the right way to draw the figure before you exaggerate, because in some ways you could make this into like a fun character, and, you know, if you put in certain details and such. But prior to getting to this point, you really do want to first learn the, the proper way, the proportionate way, uh, not the distorted way of drawing the figure, to then be able to shape it and mold it into whatever it is that you want and have it all look uh, correct. So that's just a brief overview. Um, just quick ones over here as well. More examples of how, if you don't take the head into account, how it looks weird. This is the right way to do it, but it is proportionate that the circle actually does fit within the head, right? Whereas here, it's not a circle. It's more of like a loaf bread, uh, bread loaf shape for the top part of the head. And then you add the cup shape to the bottom. This looks weird. Uh, this is the opposite of this, which is be it being too narrow. And these are common mistakes. A lot of people, if they don't understand how to draw the head, if they don't understand that you have to start out with the circle, make sure that it's the right shape. Can't have it be oblong. Um, can't have it be oblong. Can't have it look like a football. Um, can't have it distorted either. This is another one. This is a very common one. People are just like, yeah, you just draw the circle and then you draw the cup shape. But the circle is like distorted. It's not even a circle. It's some other shape. And then they just follow along with it. Um, so just really pay, be mindful of it because then again, it ripples through the rest of your anatomy. <laughs> another common mistake that people make, um, even though they got their proportions right, they understand the body etc they just don't see how it ends up making the entire figure tilted at some point if they don't pay attention to this guiding line or they just don't look out for this uh, concept like is my figure leaning toward way too much see how just unstable and almost um unrealistic it looks you know when you when you have the body even though it's proportionate, you know, there's realistic proportions and it looks right. If you, it's off balance, it just throws off the entire image and it just makes it look, um, it drops the illusion 
that people get get when they're looking at comics, when they're looking at certain scenes and they're really into it. This kind of reminds it breaks the fourth dimension, the fourth wall, I guess, um, where the viewer is just taken out of the experience and they're just looking at it as it is, and you're like, oh, it's a drawing and it's kind of bad. Um, <laughs> so like here, you could see that from the top of the head to the feet, it's in relation to each other. Whereas here, the head is like going tilting way further back past this line right here and it could be in either direction it's the same it's the same idea it just looks weird considering that the drawing itself is suggesting that the person is standing upright that they're in an upright position I think the problem with the music was I added on abstraction, this artist, and it was just like recycling some sprite music here and there. And yeah, I just needed a break from it. Um, so that pretty much sums it up, I think, for all the different uh, things that we went over last week as well. I just wanted to brush up on that as well. I like doing a bit of review. Um, it helps all of us. It helps me. It helps you. Um, especially if you're learning, um, you're just learning, or if you're just tuning in, this is your first uh, stream um, with Art Lounge, it's good to just uh, to bring this up to your attention to make you see that, yeah, these are really important principles to remember um, when it comes to drawing, and pretty much anybody should learn, well, regardless of what style you want to adapt to, like if you want to adapt like more of an anime style, if you want to do more um, you know, fine artwork or whatever it is, comic book work, any of it really requires that you understand all these principles. They're just like, um, let's, just, let's just say they're less subjective and more just of like objective truths when it comes to drawing. Um, so I'm going to continue from where I left yesterday, which is just using the cylinder shape and practicing uh, action poses and um, dramatic poses using these cylinder shapes just to demonstrate how the process really is and how it makes it less intimidating to actually tackle all these things dealing with anatomy when you when you just simplify them into these shapes and then once you get that down then it's easier for you to like connect the dots work on it a little bit but before you do that you have to remember and this is something that i try to um to remind every stream when it comes to drawing basics and even some of, sometimes other streams as well is you always want to draw lightly in this in these examples i'm drawing pretty hard because it's just going to stay in this form i'm just showing these illustrations as ways of like well, these are basic shapes, and this is how they kind of fit with each other. How you're able to draw the figure using them. Um, but if you're doing it for yourself, let's say you just need some structure to uh, create a character or to start working off of a reference, it's really important to draw lightly because then you could add more detail with a little bit more strength in your lines, and it's not going to blend in. You know, you'll be able to distinguish you know, sketch lines from more definitive lines easier. And it'll be easier for your eye not to jumble things up, you know, not, not to jumble up like the sketch with more, uh, more structure in the drawing itself. Or if you make a mistake, let's say, or if you get to a point where you connect everything and it looks great, you want to erase these, uh, these basic lines, right? You've given the definition, you've given the muscle, and etc and now those guidelines aren't necessary anymore you got the line going down the middle you know of the character you don't want that line there in the final version so if you draw out all this if you begin by drawing out everything very lightly it's going to um, work in your benefit later 
All right, so let's just, uh, let's start with that. Let's start with a light sketch and see where we can go from there. I am going to start by drawing a gesture line. Like this is the general direction of the body. Now I want to draw the body according to this gesture that the body's going to make. So it's helpful to do that. Um, it makes sure that as you're drawing it, it doesn't deviate from this, this action pose. That's kind of like the next step when it comes to uh, sketching out the figure is remembering to like set your parameters, you know, set what, where and how far everything is going to go. That's basically what, what these um, cylinder shapes and uh, basic forms are for is just setting yourself parameters. They're like the beams of the structure that you're trying to build. You know, before you start laying on the bricks, before you start decorating the interior and designing the interior, putting in walls and windows and such, you want to make sure that the beams are upright and that they're going to hold everything together proportionately. You know, the same way as it is here, it's important to make sure that this line work um, gives you parameters to work within because once you start putting in the detail and you're just like, oh, well, damn it, everything is kind of tilted. You know, it's that same problem that starts to come up again. So you want to avoid that. You want to make it a little bit easier for yourself and, and drawing these guidelines really does that for you. Another helpful tip is making sure that throughout the process, you're not gradually um, giving your pencil a death grip. You're just holding it on really tight to just make sure that like all the lines are in control in the way that you like them. Um, that is an addictive way to draw, especially for beginners, because they just don't feel like they have that same level of control. and fluidity that somebody who's been drawing for a while would have. So the way they remedy it is by holding on tighter and making sure all the lines come out as they want them to. But it ends up just really stiffening up the process and creating lines that you might want to change um, ingrained in the paper rather than keeping them like changeable. Don't give it the death grip and also keep your distance from the tip. Doing this is just going to be a disservice to you because as you're making these lines, you can't see the rest of the body. You can't see the rest of your drawing. It's, it's being obstructed by your hand. And also just the range of motion for your hand. You know, it's limited. You're really traveling along with every single line, whereas here you could rest your hand a little bit and uh, your range of motion increases a lot more. And you'll notice how it just feels um, lighter to draw. It feels better than having to like really press, uh, press on the pencil, press on the paper. It calls for like more of a rigid process.
We're gonna do more um, gesture lines. Notice it's kind of like stick figure, right? They they don't really have uh, much definition. But it is giving me some idea of like how I want the body to pivot, how I want it to um, move, that sort of sense. draw this line down the middle just for example sake compare the half of the head yep that's about the same width as the forearm just to double check And because I've been drawing the cylinder shape so often, when I'm sketching, I'm not just sketching nothing. I'm not just trying to like create some sort of mass to uh, draw the body. I'm actually quickly sketching out the specific parts of the body that comprise it. Whereas before, when I was doing this idea of like, yeah, keep it loose, sketch, like, um, there are benefits to it, I'm not knocking it, but I think that the more you become familiar with this idea of the cylinder shape makes the body, um, how you draw it more often, you could just refer to it real quick when you're making these sketches, when you're trying to establish these parameters of the body. Instead of drawing squiggles, instead of drawing just like, you know, uh, whatever, whatever it is that you can. To draw something you're actually drawing parts of the body so multiple benefits to it remember the foot is about the size of the head. So you don't want to draw too small or too big. 
And then as we mentioned, the upper part of the leg is two heads. Sometimes it's one, you're drawing a seven head figure, but that's the only difference. Then the bottom part of the leg, bottom half is um, also two heads. I'm going to just do a quick measurement there. That's, that's the size of the head. And it goes past the ankle. The measurement for the bottom part of the head, uh, bottom part of the leg is past the ankle and it's like halfway through the foot. And I also wanted to measure the foot and see if it's about the same size, maybe slightly bigger than the head. And that's the case. So we're doing all right there. And eventually you guys won't even have to do this measurement. Something I've mentioned frequently, it's like learning your alphabet, right? You're at the beginning, you're pronunciating every single letter. Um, you're looking up all the different words, but because you've read so much, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, every time you sit down to read, you're like, oh, all right, let me recite the alphabet just so that I remember all the words and letters um, or I pronounce all the letters properly and all the words properly. You just read, and that's just because you've practiced it, you know, so that's just how our brain works. It eventually just is able to recite that stuff at no time. Um, and this is what this is. You're just trying to establish your alphabet properly. You're trying to remember all these principles, and then eventually you don't even have to do all these guidelines as much. You can just, um, your eyes so well trained, and your mind's eye could see the anatomy of the human figure so well that you don't, um, you refer to it less and less as you practice. Trying to see where else I could fit another body part and maybe even draw it slightly smaller. And that's in fact what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw it slightly smaller to fill up the page as much as possible. The sketchbook is coming to an end soon. Five-year-old sketchbook.
one to see the other pages. After this page, um, I will be introducing a new lesson. Don't want to take up too much of these cylinder shape pages. And if you guys have any questions, if there are certain things that you're struggling with, don't hesitate to comment. Um, send me a message. Ask, ask away. And I'll either write you back or address it in a, in a stream next time I stream. And this is what all of this is for. It's predominantly to help viewers just like you get better at drawing. If you got any other questions, post them away. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be about the stream, it could be just about pretty much anything. To just get conversation going, get the community going, and get to know each other. This is gonna be it's gonna be the final one right here. drawing the, um, the two halves uh, of the torso, just remember the upper part of the body is two heads in height. So once you draw the head, you could be like, okay, how does this look? Does it look like this entire upper part of the torso is two heads? You could quickly do a measurement. about right then we're gonna do the hip which is one head high which is also right so we're in good shape right now
quick gesture lines to show which way the body's moving. All right, that's done. We do have a little bit of time left, so I think I will, uh, on this page, start um, just another another demonstration. Some parts of the book are more about foreshortening, and I kind of want to hold off on that for some time, just because I feel like um, still grasping. I feel like it's too soon for somebody who's just beginning to really start going into foreshortening. I think really it just comes to more of like how well you got the body down. Yes. I'm going to start doing more hands. And arms studies. So I'm going to start with the cylinder shape. For both parts. Again, you want to make sure that the upper part of the arm is about the same length as the wrist area. And this is going to be an example of an open palm. arm. I think it's important to study these, um, these muscles just because once you put the skin on, right? Or when you're drawing the figure, you're not going to start out by drawing the muscles, but if you include little details there, it just makes your drawing look even better. It makes it look more convincing and adds to that fourth wall dimension that I was mentioning earlier. And I'll demonstrate to you guys what I mean by that in these examples. Now this is an important detail right here. Sometimes, and it does vary from person to person, but um, what is more appealing is when the bicep is actually, not the bicep, the shoulder muscle, actually protrudes past the bicep area. Not too much, you don't wanna make it look like a, a bowling ball or anything, but just pay attention to that because sometimes people draw the shoulders really flat or just not as wide as the bicep and then they draw like a giant bicep and it just looks weird so that's just number one detail to pay attention to 
um, basically what what these are, are the deltoids so making sure that the deltoids are larger than the bicep and a lot of it is actually like these muscles are connected to each other like the chest muscle rather chest muscles are all linked to the bicep and deltoid muscles and when you draw out these muscles you study them yourself you're able to play around with that in your own drawing like when you're working from your imagination just using your creativity to create like heroin poses and um, just really muscular figures if you study these muscles you can bring them out in a drawing rather than um, you know knowing oh okay usually there's a muscle there you already understand why they're there and what that muscle is and you can maybe like exaggerate it a little bit you can make it a little wider you could add another line to demonstrate like oh this is like another muscle this person is just so ripped right um and that just comes and it, to make it look right you just have to understand that because you start if you start like putting on all these different muscles that just don't make sense it's the drawing isn't going to make sense you're going to see like oh this person is just throwing muscles on just to make it look buff but um yeah it just doesn't it doesn't sit right it doesn't look right your eye is able to you know i think even to the untrained eye somebody who isn't drawing um they're able to recognize these things it's just part of our instincts to like be able to uh, differentiate things and um your subconscious is able to notice certain things that are more um more in tune with what we're used to seeing than not and just drawing kind of brings that out more develops it more but we all have that we have that ability to really notice like okay this person's head is a little weird like what's going on over there or their eyes are really close together or whatever it is you don't have to be an artist to notice that it's something that we just um we just see instinctively so when somebody's drawing let's say muscles and it's off like that even though they're not artistic it's easily spotted be like yeah that doesn't look right that doesn't look like that's actually how muscles are sitting on the hand on the arm rather on the forearm if we're talking about this example and momentarily after i finish this drawing you guys will see how um these same muscles you know which which is why it's important to um to maybe even label them so let's just do that i'm gonna say deltoids biceps because you'll see in in the later examples how those same exact muscles look when the arm uh, turns, pivots, or twists. the only that's one of the reasons um why i would suggest labeling stuff it's not so that you just know these terms to be like knowledgeable but so that when you draw um and when you study let's say you can understand 
what is this muscle that I'm seeing on the arm with the skin over it? Like, what is it exactly? And how does it move according to other muscles? You know, how is there, what's the relationship between it? So it helps you make more realistic transitions. Like if you're drawing another pose and arm is a different way. And really that, that depends on your style. Like as you guys could see from other streams, if you are, um, if you are part of the drawing comic stream, if you're part of the coloring comic stream, you could see that John Buscema's work is very much anatomically correct. Like that's what I love about his work is that despite it being comic book-ish, his, his anatomy is really good. I mean, he really nails it. Um, and I think it's just that it's understanding all the muscles and where they actually are. And he's able to draw the arm. He's able to draw the leg in ways where it really, um, it demonstrates, he understands how the muscles work with each other. It's not just from uh, memory, you know, like I've drawn this arm like this so many times that I could just draw it. It's just getting good grasp of the muscles and knowing how they function in 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 comparison to the motion of the arm so because it's kind of coming out of place i'm gonna highlight this muscle right here this line and I'm gonna label it supinator longus and that's that the supinator longus is right here and remember this is open palm so you could see that by Noticing that the thumbs, or the thumb rather in this example, is facing outwards. That's another common mistake that like real beginners make is that they don't really pay attention to that detail and sometimes they draw the arm facing down but the thumb is still on the other side. It's on the wrong side so it just kind of looks weird. be going over the time yep i am um well guys i'm gonna end it here unfortunately as much as i'd like to keep working on this and it is fun i'm gonna end the drawing basic stream and in five minutes i will be back for uh drawing comments where i will be drawing john Buscema's work as i mentioned earlier so you get a chance to check that out Let's see some of his amazing panel panel work his amazing anatomy um, I will be back tomorrow, same time and place, for more uh, Drawing Basics. So if you enjoy this content, subscribe, hit the like button if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, you'll get notifications when I'm going live, and I'll see you in five minutes.